Hi, welcome back. It's the last update of the David of the North East project um, for 2020. Um, time really has whizzed by. What a year it's been, but, um, well, you know that. When I left you in the middle of December, I had just started studies based on the Asaro head, which is a mannequin for drawing students that indicates the planes of the head. Drawing students use it um, to help them uh, observe the planes and in particular think about light and shade. And I've been using an app based on the Asaro head. I don't actually have a, uh, the mannequin itself, the physical mannequin. Um, and I made a couple of quick false starts, left them behind, and then this was the third that I semi-finished. I've, I've left it where it is, um, as you can see. Uh, one eye I fleshed out a bit, the other uh, I just indicated. But I got a pretty good idea, and it, it became apparent to me fairly early on that it was going to be more challenging than I thought. And the real problem is trying to work out just how long lines are in physical space. You know, on paper, you can copy them because you're looking at something in terms of a plane and you're re reproducing it on a plane. You know, even if you're looking at 3D space, if you can imagine that you're... Uh, the image that you're seeing is is a TV screen. Um, if you can play that little trick in your mind, then all's well. The, the problem with, with sort of reversing the process is that two separate lines that on your plane view both appear to be, let's say, four centimetres may be dramatically different um, in 3D space, uh, from a geometrical point of view, if you can think back to the, th the theorem of Pythagoras, in, in a sense, the plane will, the planar line you're seeing as a sort of the base of the triangle, and the line in 3D space is um, projecting back uh, or projecting forward. So. In a, in a sense, becomes the hypotenuse, and, and so can be uh, a little bit longer or even considerably longer. Um, using a, a drawing term, it's um, you know you you have effects of foreshortening as well. So all of these are challenges in trying to take this image and produce a model from the image. And, and this isn't something I wasn't aware of before, but when you're co concentrating on it, it becomes ever more apparent. So I got this far, um, produced this, this model. I'm going to leave it as it is and, and use it as a starting point for any future excursions. I did a second Asaro head study, complete, sort of what will be a completed study, where I basically copied this, slightly improved it, did it in a bit more detail, and then started filling in spaces smoothing out the the sharp corners into into gentler curves and let me show you how that turned out there we go um, now there's a bit of uh, it's a bit more difficult to see it clearly, obviously, because of, uh, well, it's not finished, and it is tricky to pull apart the back and the front. But it's going well, um, and it has generated a new idea, and, and this is part of the idea of the, of the studies, besides thinking about planes and how I can use planes to construct my David and eventually deform the planes into smoother, more natural forms, curves. Um, the other, one of the other ideas that I was hoping would occur is that, or, or payoffs, 
is that new techniques might arrive, uh, you know, float into into my mind, and and that to a degree has happened. Uh, one of the things I've been doing with this, sorry, just came to tripod. Um, one of the things that I've wondered about before is um, to what extent can I eliminate uh, lines that sort of end, end abruptly, become kind of points, connecting lines. Let me show you one as an example. Top of the eyebrow over here, just above my fingertip, you can see there's a, a, a line that comes down the forehead, joins onto the eyebrow and basically stops because the wire stopped. So I thought, what can I do about that to, to create more of a continuous effect, which is, of course, how we see people as the lines flow. Uh, and, and so what I've been doing is where lines have um, stopped, I've sort of started a new line as best I can. Um, my worry about doing that before was that you would end up having two coils next to each other and it would become a sort of, um, for want of a better word, uh, an unsightly pimple. Uh, but that doesn't seem to me to be really the case at all. For example, uh, let me point at two lines that have joined. Over here, um, you know, if I didn't point that out, how obvious is it really? Um, I don't think it's a problem. So that's been interesting. Um, the head studies are interesting um, and suggesting to me new ideas to work. Uh, and I think that's important, um, not to just keep on plowing, plowing forward, but sometimes to take a step to one side, work on something that is related, but not the thing itself, and then see what you can discover and how that might then meld in with, um, I'm, I'm forcing another metaphor, the hand that you're developing, kind of put the two together, a bit like when, we, when I was a kid and we'd play canasta, you know, or if you're a, a, a bridge aficionado, you know, how do you join the two hands together? How do they feed off each other? So in this case, I have these two 3D scans, models, uh, one of the Statue of David, the other of the Saro head. Um, the Statue of David obviously is, is, a, is a finished, smooth sculpture. The Saro head is, is um, very jaggedly joined planes. So I think I can pick up ideas from one that will eventually shed light on the other. Because you, you sort of, by looking at the Asaro head, I eliminate all the problems that, that fog over my thinking of being realistic or it looking like something. You know, in this case, it's, that's not the, a worry at all. So, very successful. Um, let me give you a side view. Try not to kick over the, the uh, tripod. Yeah, that gives you a, a three-quarter view. Um, I think it's going very well. Uh, as the year has ground to a halt, I have found energy waning, and I keep on finding new things to do rather than the eyes and ears, which are detailed and of critical importance. So um, December the 30th and 31st has been very much filling in spaces. Um, but that's it. Last video of the year. Um, as always, I, I really would love to hear your comments. Let me know what you think. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that when you look back on 2020 and look beyond the, uh, uh, 
the occurrences that might have ranged from the seriously inconvenient to the painfully tragic, you know, if you look beyond all of that, I hope um, your year has been a good one, as good as it could be, and I wish you health and, and happiness for you and your family in the new year. Uh, and, and I I think 2021, it's got a nice ring to it. It's got a sort of sense of continuity. And I think it's going to be a good one. So from a, a sunny Brazil and an ongoing sculptural project world of David of the Northeast, Happy New Year.